Hey guys, my name is Radic. I'm your TA for Economics 1BO3. Um, for those of you at the University of Toronto who have contacted me uh, saying that you're also watching this, this is for Economics 101. So, i also like to say hello to the people down in California who have been watching this. It's excellent that you guys have found these videos as well. So, uh, this chapter is about competitive markets. Um, in our book, it's chapter 14. I'm sure over time that'll change. So, um, per, uh, per, uh, competitive markets, also known as perfect competition. Um, these kinds of markets have two characteristics. Many buyers and sellers. And second, goods are largely homogenous. I'm going to explain why these are important. So why is number one important? Why is many buyers and sellers important? Well, because many buyers and sellers means that no one buyer or seller can influence the market price of a good. So, suppo so suppose you are a owner of a pizza shop and there is a customer that walks in and says, hey, I'm not going to pay $10 for your pizza, I'm going to pay $5 for your pizza. Well, you can tell the guy to hit the road because there are many other people willing to pay $10 for your pizza, especially if that is the market price. Now, on that same note, suppose you're still the pizza shop owner and you say, my large pizza is going to cost $40. Well, no one's going to pay that because other firms, other pizza shops in the market charge $10 for that, um, for that large pizza. Now the second point that is also important um, is homogeneity. This means all the products are largely the same. Um, so if your pizza is exactly the same as everyone else's, then you have to price it the same as everyone else. Um, that way, the only way that you could charge a higher price and get away with it is if your product is distinguishably different, if it is distinguishably superior. Uh, you can also get away with charging a lower price and without influencing the market price um, by having a distinguishably inferior good. But as a single firm in a perfect competitive market, you will not influence the, the, the market price. So, yes, excellent. So profits in perfect competition are zero. Profits are not the same thing as revenues. So why would a firm operate if there are zero profits? Well, there's a difference between zero accounting profits and zero economic profits. Accounting profits are not the same thing as economic profits. Economic profits take into account opportunity cost, whereas accounting profits do not. You'll have to jump back a few chapters to figure out the difference between accounting and economic profit if you are fuzzy on that. So I'm just going to warn you that with the numbers that I picked, this firm operating in the short run is actually producing a profit for those of you who are going to notice that and nitpick on it. So I'm just kind of warning you in ahead of time. So uh, what is the difference between revenue and profit? So this example is strictly to show the difference between revenue and profit. So suppose you are selling pizzas, you're still a pizza owner, and you sell each pizza for $10. But it costs you $5 to make that pizza, right? You have to buy ingredients, right? We're gonna ignore labor for now. It costs $5 in ingredients for you to make that pizza. And let's say you sell five pizzas in a day. Total revenue will be the $10 per pizza times the five pizzas that you've sold. Your total revenue is $50. But it costs you $5 per pizza to make the pizza. So your profits are your total revenue minus your total costs. Total revenue, as I just said, is the $10 you charge per pizza times the five pizzas that you've sold. Now total cost is average cost times quantity. Average cost here is $5 per pizza that you've made. Quantity is five. So total revenue is 10 times five. Total cost is five times five. So it's 10 times 5 minus 5 times 5 equals 50 minus 25. That means that there are $25 in profits. So what is your average revenue? Average revenue is total revenue divided by the quantity. So here our total revenue is 50, our quantity was 5, so our total revenue or our average revenue is 10. So some of you might have noticed this. Um, in perfectly competitive markets, we have the price equals the average revenue equals the marginal revenue. So what is marginal revenue? Basically means how much revenue you make when you sell one more unit of output. 
So how about some profit maximization in a perfectly competitive market? Profit, profit maximizing in a perfectly competitive market is different than profit maximizing in a monopoly or an oligopoly, so don't mix these up. Monopolies are the next chapter. In perfect competition, we maximize profits where MC equals MR. The marginal cost equals the marginal revenue. I'm going to put up a chart, and here we see um, this point right here is where the marginal cost equals the marginal revenue. So this is the profit maximizing point. If we look over to the left, we see here the profits peak at 7 and they start going down. So that's indicative of there being a maximum. If the perfectly competitive firm drops the price below where MC equals MR, let's say to where MC equals ATC, then the firm will exit the market. If the, if the perfectly competitive firm drops the price below MC equals ATC to the point where MC equals AVC, then the firm will shut down. So what the heck is the difference between exiting and shutting down? Basically the long run and the short run. If a firm decides to shut down, a firm will decide to shut down if the total revenue is less than the total variable cost. The variable costs are the costs that are not fixed. Variable costs are the costs that increase as production increases. So as you make more and more pizzas, you need your employees to work more and more hours. And that's why it's called variable. This is the opposite, not opposite, but this is different from fixed. Let's say that you are paying a property tax on the building where you sell your, produce and sell your pizzas. The property tax is not dependent on your output. You can make zero pizzas or a bajillion pizzas and you know what, you still have to pay that same amount of property tax. When you're paying the same amount, regardless of output, that's why it's called fixed. Lasers. Um, and the firm temporarily shuts down, but will reopen later. That's the difference between exiting and shutting down. Once you exit, you're gone. When you shut down, you'll reopen later. A firm that will exit the market or a firm will exit the market if total revenue is less than total cost. Total costs include variable and fixed costs. Here the firm is not covering its fixed or variable costs and will exit the market for the long run. The firm decides to exit if by choosing to stay open the revenue would the revenue it would receive would be less than its total costs. So if to make a pizza it costs five dollars and you are selling the pizza for four dollars then you should just give up and exit the pizza business. So here's a quick spiel on the supply curve. So the firm's long run supply curve is, is its portion of the marginal cost curve above the ATC curve. I'll throw up a little diagram here. It's, it's this area right here. It's the MC curve above the ATC curve. That is an individual firm's long run supply curve. Um, so in the short run, the number of firms are fixed. In the long run, the number of firms are not fixed. So before I get back to that, remember that the quantity of firm supplies is different from the quantity that the market supplies. Suppose that a, uh, a single firm can sell 200 pizzas in a day, but suppose that there are 100 firms that sell pizzas. If each firm supplies 200 pizzas in a day and there are 100 firms, while well, the market supply of pizzas is 200 pizzas per firm times 100 firms, which is 20,000 pizzas a day supplied in the market by the market. Firms will enter into the market if there are profits. So in our example beforehand, right, it cost you five bucks to make the thing, right, including opportunity costs, let's say, and you're selling the pizza for $10, right? There exist profits here, right? So if there exists profits, firm will enter. If too many firms enter the market, the quantity supplied is more than the quantity demanded, so the price has to fall. If the price falls below ABC, some of the smaller, weaker firms will shut down. If the price falls below ATC, some of the weaker, smaller firms will exit. As firms exit, the quantity of supply goes down and the price slowly starts to go back up. Over time, this cycle happens over and over again. There are short-run profits to be had. There are short-run losses to be had in perfect competition. But the long-run profits... Um, cancel out with the long run losses, well, sorry, the short run profits, the cancel out with the short run losses over the cycle, over a bit, over the long run. Um, and that is why there exists zero profits in perfect competition in the long run. 
So hope that made sense. That was chapter 14 about perfectly competitive markets. Uh, chapter 15 is on monopolies. Excellent. Um, I'm Radic, I'm your TA, and I will see you in chapter 15.